Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm just going to show you how to download 60 Force for the Mac. 60 Force is a Nintendo 64 emulator. It is great. It works amazingly. It's really smooth. Um, I know it took a while for me to find a decent one, decent video to figure out how to get everything all set up, how to set up my controller, how to set up the ROMs. So I figured I'm just going to make a a video on how to do all of that and try to cover everything as much as well as I can because I do know that it is hard to find some videos out there that are good that actually describe everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into this. First thing you want to do is type in 60 force download, do whatever. I'll have all the links in the description. Um, I get mine from 60force.en.softtonic.com. Um, you just go ahead and click on where it says free download. Um, it'll take you to another page. You click free download. See it'll start to download. It'll throw it up over here somewhere there you go now what you need to do is just click on the disk image and it will pull up a file and to install it it's just as easy as taking this and dragging it over to your applications folder now I'm not going to do that because I've already downloaded this so okay now we've got 64 installed next thing you need to do is get some games for it my personal favorite is um, CoolRom.com. It's got a lot of things. You can even download your emulator straight from here. You know, they've got, just go here, click on any. If you're on a Mac, you'll have to click this link that says visit our exclusive Macintosh emulator section here. And here's all the emulators you can download. They've got original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Atari, GameCube, uh, PlayStation 2. You can really download a lot. Um, but to download the actual files, you want to go up to here where it says ROM files. Scroll down to wherever you're looking for, in this case Nintendo 64. And you'll come up to one that says top 50 downloaded, top 50 rated out of 5 stars. So you'll see those, you can search through those, you know, click next 25. See all these, obviously, top 50 downloaded, you got Super Smash Brothers, Mario 64, uh, Majora's Mask, Conker's Bad Fur Day. You've got all these. So, um, you can also go here and search by the letter it starts with, by genre. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to download something quick, um, one I haven't downloaded yet, but um, was going to anyways. So, for this one, let's just go ahead and click on, let's go to Donkey Kong 64, why not? So, click on the ROM you want to download, and you'll be brought to a page like this. And note, there are actually two links here where you can go and download that program straight from this website right here you know click to download here okay but you'll see a page like this it'll have screenshots um, some may have videos of gameplay uh, but really what you want is right here the download now click on that it's gonna open up another window depending on what browser you're in I'm using Safari so there's You'll have to wait eight seconds and you'll be able to click to download. So click download your file. Uh, these are really small files. So I know some of them are a little bigger than others. Looks like this one is 27 megabytes, so nothing too huge. So let's just go ahead and wait for this to finish. All right, now that's all finished up, let's go ahead and show it in Finder. This is the way I prefer to do things. You might not like it this way, but this is what I do. Um, it'll come in a zip file. So just double click on it and it will unzip it. You will see your game right here. Let's just go ahead and get rid of these. Okay, so you see your game right here and you'll notice it's a Z.Z64 um, file. Um, that is the Nintendo 64 the 64 file that it will read is a .z64. Um, I like to have all of my games in its own little folder. Right here you notice I've got 64 games, there's a few games I've got. So go ahead and just drag that folder over to where you've got your games or just leave them spread about. I know some people like it better that way. Um, so now you'll see, you click on here and we've now got Donkey Kong 64. Uh, next step we're going to do is we're actually going to open 64, so just click it and when you see it it's originally going to look like this it's not going to be full screen just go to options enter full screen um, next I'm going to show you how to set up a controller um, this one is just a you know basic USB controller picked it up at 
um, Salvation Army for like $250, um, a Century Concept Digital USB Gamepad. Now, if you're playing Nintendo 64 games, you'll want one that's, that has analog sticks uh, because, you know, they've got the C buttons and the analog stick and the D-pad, and there's a lot of buttons on that controller. Um, so to set up something like this, um, once it's connected, you want to plug it in before you turn on 64. So it's plugged in, you go to 64 and configure controllers. Now, you'll see a list here of what is all plugged in. Um, you know, I have an external keyboard that I've got and all that stuff as well. But for right now, it's going to start with the default keyboard is going to be your default controller. See, you can A button is command, B is option. It's kind of confusing and difficult to work with, um, in my opinion. Um, it takes away from the experience. I'd rather have a physical controller when I'm playing a video game rather than a keyboard. So, like I said, I picked this up. What you need to do is click on it. USB joystick, you can rename it to, like, um, some of them you can rename. Anyways, uh, you just click on it and click configure, and you'll see here, you know, it's got A button is button 3, B button is button 2, I've got my triggers, my joysticks. So, changing what buttons these correspond to is as easy as this. You click on the button you want, for right now it's an A button, which you see is number 3 on here. I'm just going to switch it to number 2, all you do is press it. you got to double click on this, and then press it. So you see I already switched it to button 2, let me switch it back. It's that easy, then you can just go down the list. Button 2, stick up, it's going to up, down, left, right. It's going to automatically set these. So you can switch them around at any time, that is a good thing. Another good thing is this controller, when I bought it, it had a drift. So you know, when I'm not touching it, the controller or character, um, whatever, car will s go to one side when I'm not pushing the controller. Um, and instead of, you know, figuring it out, opening the controller, cleaning it all out, replacing things, they've got this thing done here that says Axis Dead Zone. Now it starts off at zero, and you can just fiddle around with it. Mine, I need to have up at 48, and that is where I have no drift on my controller at all. Now that this is set up, hit OK, make sure you check the one you want to use, right there. Um, I've always got both of these checked just in case. So... X that off, now you want to go and open the ROM. So you go to open, file open, and you go to wherever you've got yours. I'll just go through it. I'm on my desktop, I'll go games and 64 games. Let's just open Donkey Kong 64 since we just downloaded that. And there's that Z64 file. I'll click on that and it'll start to load it up. I'll kind of show you, you know, how smooth this runs because it is a really, really smooth running application. Um, it's almost like you're actually playing it on the TV or, you know, instead of on your computer, there's not really a lag. Um, some of these ROMs don't work. Sometimes you get bad ones. It looks like I just downloaded a bad ROM. So let's just open one I have played before. Um, let's just go to Conquer's Bad Fur Day. We'll open this up. And these actually have... Um, memory cards built in so you don't even have to save your you don't even have to freeze and save the state you're at you can actually you can do that if you want if you're in between a mission and there's no save point but it'll also automatically save it into a location that it remembers so let's go ahead and enter full screen here and I'll just kind of show you a little bit of the gameplay gotta get past the logo So as you can see already, it runs really smoothly. Um, it also depends on how much space you have on your RAM as well. You know, I've got an 8 gigabyte RAM on my MacBook, so um, it runs pretty smooth. So let's just go ahead and do a little bit, just run around this corner here. These guys are very mean. 
feel like this stop on you. Let's wait for him. He's gonna turn around here. Oop, maybe one more. Yep, now he's gonna turn around. Yep, yep. Oh, and I got squished. Sounds about right. But yeah, um, and the shadows are a little weird on this one, so but that's that's easy for me to deal with. I really don't care too much about that. And I am using my controller here, I'll show you. Alright, well that pretty much concludes this tutorial. When you're in full screen, just go up to the top and you'll see the bar come back. Um, just quit. So, um, if there are any other things you um, I didn't touch base on that you would like to see, just go ahead and let me know in the comments section. You know, rate, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, I love to give you guys things that you want to see. Uh, pretty soon, I'm going to do a tutorial here on how to set up Dolphin, which is a GameCube emulator, which is great. Um, set up controller, same thing as this. I would just like to show you guys how to do it, because like I said, there aren't that many... Um, there aren't that many comprehensive videos out there. So just go ahead and rate, comment, subscribe, and thank you guys for watching.